Okay, so now we know given the, we have uh, the lens maker's equation, which given the radii and index of a fraction of a lens, we can estimate the focal point. Um, and we're going to talk today about a quick and dirty method of um, predicting how uh, point sources of light are imaged by lenses. So um, just quickly, we'll talk about this a little again later, but point sources of light are literally points, of, points <laughs> that emit light in all directions. Can you even see the yellow? Yeah, okay. Um, in all directions. And uh, an ideal lens, um, of the, an ideal imaging lens takes a point source, takes the light from the point source, and sends it back to a point. And knowing where that point is tells us a lot about how that lens will image. We can figure out the magnification and, and things like that. So um, we're gonna talk about a graphical method first, and then the next lecture, we'll practice it. And then after that, we will talk about formulas that we can use that use that can approximate this kind of stuff. Um, it can be really useful for um, approx knowing where to approximately place lenses. Uh, yeah. So we know three things that, uh, about rays passing through an ideal lens. We can use these to analyze optical systems because what it does is it allows us to draw um, lines through the system that uh, when they intersect, tell us where the image is gonna be. So the first thing we know about these uh, opt uh, ideal lenses is that parallel beams, let's do red, parallel beams coming into a lens, let's not do that and do a longer one just because I don't know, I want to. Parallel beams coming into a lens that are parallel with the optical axis will intersect at the focal point. So all of these will then come down through the focal point like this. Now we know this isn't true because we've been playing around with the ray tracing software. So we know lens systems are non-ideal. But this is, like I said, a, a nice, quick, easy way of doing this. So I'll, uh, let's write this down. Hopefully you did it in your own words before um, I'm writing it. But uh, oops. Rays parallel to optical axis pass through the focal point. Now, for positive lenses, positive focal point lenses, um, they pass through the focal point on the opposite side of the lens. Negative focal lengths create imaginary focal points. So here, let's look at a negative lens here and let's draw our rays. So we have our parallel rays coming through our lens, parallel to our optical axis. They're gonna actually go through our focal point like this. So, right, this part of the ray, oops, this part of the ray here and this part here are imaginary. They don't actually exist. What the ray does is it travels, uh, it travels in this direction, hits the negative lens and starts spreading out. Right, and it does it on this side too. But the angle at which it spreads out is such that it seems as though it came from this focal point right here. So with negative lenses, these rays pass through the focal point on the same side of the lens as the parallel beam. Cool, so that's rule number one. Rule number two is rays passing through the center of a lens are not refracted. So, um, do our lenses here, okay. So uh, obviously rays passing along the optical axis go straight. Rays coming from the top and coming down are unchanged and yeah. So we just draw a straight line like that. Uh, 
And rule three is rays passing through a focal point on the same side end up parallel. So it's basically the inverse of rule one, if you want to think of it that way. So uh, what we can do is we can draw our rays again, and we will draw them through our focal point on this side. And then, oh, they're kind of thin. They come out parallel to the optical axis like this. So um, yeah, just like that. Uh, so they pass through the focal point on the same side of the lens, they come out parallel. Now that's for positive focal length lenses, for negative focal length lenses, which this is a, a, a shorthand notation for negative focal length lenses is we put a uh, carrots pointing out like this. So let's, yeah. oh shoot, come on, stop it. Let's, uh, put a carrot up, uh, oh geez, come on. Um, we put this upside down carrot here on the top and on the bottom. And that, that's a, a shorthand notation for a negative lens. Positive lenses look like this, All right? Okay, so um, in this case, if we were trying to draw our, um, draw our rays, we know that um, they pass through the focal length on the opposite side of the lens for negative lenses. So we're gonna draw our ray like this. And where it hits the lens, it starts traveling parallel to the optical axis. So the actual path of our ray is this, comes down, oh, comes down, hits our lens and starts going like this. But this is a useful for helping us align that ray, right? The, the photons do not actually travel the rest of the way to the focal point. Um, and we obviously we can do the same uh, like this, traveling to this focal point, and then it travels along the optical axis. So you, you can, again, our, our ray will travel like this and comes right parallel like that. So negative lenses will take a converging beam, right? The beam is coming together towards the focal point and turn it into a parallel beam. Cool. So we can use this now to project point sources of light through a system. So given point one here, oh, that skipped, sorry about that. Given point one here, which is a point source of light, so it is emitting light in all directions. Um, let's figure out where the image of that be, that point is. So uh, we know our focal length of our lens is 50 millimeters. Um, note the uh, notate the shorthand notation for a positive lens because we have arrows, uh, basically a line with two two arrowheads on it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to follow our rules. So the first rule that I like to apply is um, beams that pass through the center of the lens are not deflected. So what's cool about the graphical method is we immediately know that the image of this point source has to exist somewhere on this line right here. Yeah. Now, now we use the two focal points. Remember, each every lens has two focal points that are the focal length away from the lens. And what, which, uh, now we're gonna apply um, our two rules, other two rules to this. The first rule is rays coming parallel into the lens, parallel to the optical axis, pass through the focal point, F2, like that. And already we have an intersection of these two rays and we have a pretty good guess that our image is gonna be right there, right? Um, that's our image, but it's always, always good to double check, right? So we're going to do a third line now, and that third line is going to pass through our focal point, hit our lens, and then go parallel to the optical axis. 
And that is right about there. So um, there's a couple things to note here. This method is only as good as you draw the location of your focal point. So I drew these F1 and F2 by hand, and they're clearly not equally spaced from our lens, which is why all of our lines didn't exactly line up. Also, my lens is a little bit cockeyed. So, you know, the graphical method is only as accurate as you are capable of drawing it. And also, as we know, um, thin lenses, our lenses do not behave perfectly, right? So there's that added error to it. But what I find super useful about this method is it allows me to mentally look at an optical system and predict how it's going to behave, right? Because I can project these rays through the system, simple systems, and I can figure out ex it kind of how it's going to behave, right? So it gives us a mental way to kind of uh, look at an optical system and, and predict what it's going to do. All right, let's do some more practice. This time we have a negative 50 uh, millimeter um, focal length lens. So this is a negative lens. It's going to try to diverge this uh, beam, which is interesting because the light coming from a, a point source is already diverging, right? So it's already spreading out like this. And so this lens is going to make it spread out even more. Cool. So we have our F, our focal points here on the left and the right. Let's draw our um, draw our lines. And, and uh, this time, right, remember we, with negative lenses, when we draw our beam through the center of the lens, the, the, the method, it doesn't change for negative lenses. What changes is the parallel beams. So um, we're going to draw our beam now parallel to the optical axis. It's going to hit our lens. And then it's going to go through the focal point on the same side because it's a negative lens. Okay, so um, because it's a little hard to understand, again, I'm going to draw over the line the actual path of the light. It's going to go um, from here along. It's going to hit the lens. And it's going to start to spread out more. Great. And this is the actual. This is the actual path of that beam. And then we can draw one more beam, which goes through this focal point, sorry, through this far focal point. Oh, I got confused for a second. Um, it goes through this far focal point, but we know that a second, a second it hits the lens because it's a negative lens, it goes parallel to the optical axis. Um, So the path that this light is going to take is going to come like here. It's going to hit the optical axis, and it's going to go this direction. So the net effect is our beam ends up spreading out even more, right? Um, what is interesting, though, is if we look at the intersection of all of these lines, these lines all intersect, um, and you can take this line back to here, these lines all intersect right here. And this is our image right here. And this is called an imaginary image. And the reason it's imaginary is, uh, as you can see, the green lines don't all pass to that point. Um, if we have, if our observer is sitting over here with a looking at the system, so let's draw a little eye here. That's our eye. Um, if the observer is looking at this system, it will see a, a, a point of light right there, right? So what this lens does is for this observer, it translates the point of light from here to here. Um, but again, if we were to put something there, um, an actual object like a camera, it would not see a point of light um, because not all the rays are converging there. So it's called an imaginary image. Um, this is called a real image. There's one other thing to note that becomes really obvious with this graphical method, which is why I love it, is that the location of the image is inverted when you have a real image. So um, it's inverted. If, our, if we moved our 
point source down to the op neg uh, bottom side or negative side of the uh, optical axis, our image would move up. Um, here, our image is uh, real and upright. Or sorry, it's an imaginary image and it's upright. So it is um, on the same side of the optical axis as the point source. And if we were to move the point source down, our image would move down to there. Cool. And, and you can actually estimate the amount of magnification too, because the amount of magnification is the this height um, divided, oh, sorry, this height, the image height divided by the uh, object height. So cool, but well, we'll talk about that in more detail later. Right now, what we're going to do is we're going to practice this with a little bit more complicated system, or two more complicated systems. Um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to um, look at a negative 50 millimeter focal length lens and a positive 50 millimeter focal length lens. Um, combined and let's see where the image ends up for this. So uh, the first thing we're going to do, I'm going to do uh, the rays for the first lens in red and I'll do the rays in the second lens, uh, second lens in blue. Okay, so we have our point source. Um, it's a negative 50 millimeter focal length lens. So that means um, we have to, and here's our first focal point here. These are really close to each other, so we have to be careful about this. So we're going to draw a line from the point source to the first focal point, and that ray is going to travel parallel to the optical axis. Cool. Um, uh, now we draw a ray through the focal point. Oh, sorry. Now we draw a ray parallel to the optical axis. And it travels on a path that is um, that appears to have, have passed through the first focal point. Um, remember, this is a negative lens, so it's a little confusing. So we're going to draw that real quick. Um, it comes over here, hits the lens, and then starts spreading out. But the line it starts spreading out along seems to have passed through that focal point. This one goes in this direction like this. And then our last ray that we're going to um, draw is our ray through the center of this lens. Cool. So um, we can see that there is an intersection point right here. And you probably are asking, like, why are there only two, two rays intersecting here? And the reason is, is because this ray, this parallel ray right here, actually we need to project it backwards. And we see that it goes right through that point. So this is our image. This is our new image. Um, and we're going to now pretend that that image is our new point. So that we're going to call this it's I1, or we can also call it point two. And we're gonna start now using blue lines, projecting this point through our second lens, which has a positive focal length of 50 millimeters. So uh, we've already got this beautiful line here. So let's draw a, a parallel beam along the optical axis. And then this goes through F2 here on this side. Um, we need to draw a line through the center of the lens. We're getting shallow angles here, so little errors will add up. So all of our lines might not intersect here. But this, now we've uh, drawn it to the center of the second lens and it goes through um, and it intersects with that other ray. So it looks like we have a possible image right here. We need to double check that though by now doing our third rule, which is a line through, oops, A line through our second focal point will then travel parallel to the optical axis and 
indeed it does intersect the other two rays at the same point and this is our this is our image oops image so the question bonus question is um is it real and the answer is yes it is real because look we can actually see these rays converge into an actual point so if we put our hand there we would see a bright point of light if we put our hand right here um, and indeed if we had our eye here Let's pretend our eye, <laughs> let me redo that. If we put our eye here, we would see a point of light that seems to appear at this point. Cool. So is it real? Yes. Is it upright? No, right? Real images are inverted. Okay. Um, if you've ever used a um, binocular system, good binoculars, <laughs> um, the image that you see is upright, which means you're looking at an imaginary image, right? Um, however, cheap telescopes produce an inverted image and a real, uh, and you're looking at a real image in your, on your eyeball. So uh, expensive telescopes can produce a uh, imaginary image that's upright. Cool. So that's that example. Let's do one more example here. Um, where, where we have different focal lengths, uh, but the focal lengths match up. So we've put F1 and F2 at the same point here. So we have F is equal to 100 millimeters, and then an F is equal to 250, or sorry, 25 millimeters. So the focal length of our second lens is a quarter of the focal length of our first lens. All right, so let's try this now. So um, let's start again with uh, a red raise for our first, um, our first point. So we're going to draw a parallel beam to the optical axis, and that's going to go through our focal point there. Um, let's do uh, a ray through the center of our lens, and it turns out we did not go far enough. So let's redraw this ray a little bit longer so that we know that it, we can figure out where it intersects. It turns out right there. And then let's draw a ray through F1 and then parallel across to the optical axis. So our image now is here. Oops. Image is right, roughly right here. And great. So that's the image. Now here comes the hard part here. Suddenly now we have an image that's on the right hand side of our, um, our lens, but we have to pretend like it was coming from the left hand side. So um, our rules still apply though, okay? So um, we draw a line for, it's a positive lens, so we draw a line uh, through the left-hand side focal point. Sorry, I have, I'm having trouble keeping this um, uh, straight in my head. Through, through the left-hand side focal point um, uh, and the uh, point source, and where it hits the lens, it starts going parallel. And then we draw a line through the center of the lens to the imaginary point source. So we have an intersection right here, it looks like. And then our last, last one is um, a beam traveling parallel to through the point source appears to pass through the, the right-hand focal point. So our image is going to occur right here. And so if we want, if now let's go through and track, um, we can actually track a, a single ray as it passes through our system now. So this ray comes through, gets focused down, and then gets deflected again in this direction and leaves going parallel. Um, this ray 
comes down like this, ends up parallel to our system, and then comes up here and travels in this direction, which is great. Cool, so um, we know that our image now is occurring right here. And that image is real and inverted. And we can actually measure, like I said, the uh, magnification. So the magnification in this case, if we were to draw some heights, let's use hot pink. Oh, I already have them in. Here's L1 for, we'll use blue. L1's there. This is L2. So our magnification is gonna be equal to L2 over L1 uh, with a negative sign on it. And that negative sign tells us that um, tells us that the image is gonna be inverted usually. And if it's uh, positive, um, yeah. So it tells us what side the optical axis things are gonna be on. Cool, all right. So that is the graphical method. Um, and next we're gonna practice it a little bit more. And then we are gonna move on to equations that allow us to calculate the locations of these point sources um, as well as their heights.